Greetings, dear ones. We are very pleased to have this moment to speak with you. And in listening to that lovely music that was just played on the Ashta call, we are imaging the rolling mist of gold dust pouring throughout the earth now. You notice that the song builds as it goes along. Now, it has an interesting title, that song, written by Pueblo Native American composer Robert Mirabal, who also plays the flute in it. It's titled Memoir Chaco, as in Chaco Canyon. Mirabal, being a Pueblo man from Taos, New Mexico, speaks energetically of Chaco Canyon in that beautiful tune. The build-up in the song draws one very intentionally into the realization that what we see around us is really not all that is there. That there is a new civilization coming forward that will make the ancient civilizations plainer and more understandable to those who are on the earth now. Because one wanders the ruins, these beautiful centuries-old structures of Chaco Canyon, left by an indigenous people of long ago, and these are considered to be mysterious buildings, because there are small openings into some of the chambers that have no light, other than through that small opening. And one wonders, well, how did people survive in this? Or they notice the alignment of the lines of the structure. There are several structures, but they coincide with not only certain environmental earthly alignments, but with astrological alignments as well. And they seem to speak to the stars, and relate to the stars. So there was clearly Star Nation's assistance in the building of these dwellings. In fact, they were built as a sort of bridge between the stars and the people who lived on the Earth. And, dear ones, you're coming into the same time now. You are coming into something which is going to recall that Star Nation's connection of long ago, and far exceed it. Don't be surprised if you are visiting a very old structure in the western US or anywhere where you are picking up images inwardly of the people who lived there hundreds or thousands of years ago. In those moments, you're going to see with your heart. This is how babies and children see angels. It's how children see the fairy realm and the elven realm. The spirits of animals, and the spirits of the trees because they're seeing with their heart. Your consciousness is dropping down into the heart space, and coming out of a severe left brain preoccupation, because you're realizing it's time to let that go now. Left brain reasoning doesn't answer to everything. It can't answer to all of human experience. It can't answer to all of one person's experience. And it doesn't make much sense to expect that of it. How can the conscious mind, how can the left brain, answer that which is beyond the capability of highly rational left brain reasoning power? There are things that the heart space and the spirit will understand that the mind has not yet developed the ability to grasp. And so you may feel at times that you are in a situation that is difficult for you, in grasping why some people did this or that. If you can just take a moment for yourself in that time, and come down into the heart space, and pretend you are looking out at that situation. Close your eyes, and pretend you are looking out at the situation from the heart space. And through the heart, see what is truly happening there. It will not appear to you as it did when you were looking at it purely from this highly rational reasoning aspect of not only left brain, but the trained impulse to make everything make sense according to your mind, and the social structures and the belief structures that humanity has been given over the past 100 years or so, which have grown a bit. They have absolutely grown to include such things as computers, and space travel, and all sorts of exciting new technologies in healing, and new forms of education. Yet really, what you are looking at, dear ones, is the development of the higher self within the human body. And accepting fifth dimensional vibrational reality within how you view your daily reality. This is a huge shift. This is one of the biggest shifts you'll ever hear of in your life. And certainly, it is the biggest leap humanity has ever undergone. We say this knowing that there was a very great fall from the higher dimensional awareness in which people lived utterly intuitively. There was no veil before their eyes, and they could see and understand one another and communicate over many miles, telepathically. But we would say you're coming back into that, to move up into that beautiful time of not only self-healing, but healing one's planet. And moving back up into the vibration of being spiritually aware that that new consciousness seeks to integrate your daily earth self with your entire being. This is the biggest leap that one could possibly imagine, 
coming up from a third dimensional vibration and environment covering the entire planet as well as human awareness. So now as you're listening to that song, Memoir Chaco by Robert Mirabal, and the music is building, and there's an ongoing, growing braver and stronger drumbeat in the background, and the volume is growing, as the dramatic sense of expectation is growing as you listen to it, or to any music that is swelling in intensity and moving toward some higher moment of realization, you can image this beautiful gold dust, spreading out around your entire planet. We strongly encourage that you see this rolling out, particularly to all places in which there is great strife, great struggle and great loss. And over and through the violence that has taken place this year, and over the past year or more, in the case of the war in Ukraine. And understand that, as much as the people there and elsewhere are suffering, including the natural disasters and the toxic spills upon the environment, such as in Ohio as much as the people are suffering with this, understand that this is their path. As they plant the light within this desperate darkness, they are working on a higher level on a soul level, and within their higher self-consciousness. Understand that this is their way of shifting this planet to a higher level. How beautiful! How incredible that even those who are still children have come forward to do this. Absolutely astounding! And never doubt, dear ones, that your family who are star nations, as the indigenous folk will call them never doubt that they have never ceased to be involved with this planet, and now are ratcheting up and increasing their involvement and their interventions all the more. And as you invite them in, they can do more. Now, our writer was saying recently, on one of the conference calls that the White Knights hold on Friday evenings, I call in the ETS. I call in the Star Nations, but they don't show up. And we have reminded her they show up all the time, but they're not always obviously visible. One can always speak with them and receive the energy of their reply, if not the actual words inwardly. One can always call them forward for assistance. And the assistance is going to be there. Without question, it's going to be there. It's just that, yes, one might look forward to a ship landing in the back garden. But it's not going to happen that way every time. And there are many reasons for that. And yet the calls are answered, dear ones. Just as these prayers, particularly if you speak them aloud, or call upon angelic assistance, call upon ascended master or light being assistance, or just assistance from source energy all of this is going to be answered, because it must be. Vibrationally, when a call is sent out, it always creates a pulling action which then pulls back to one the results of one's own intention. So we would ask that, even though these times can feel treacherous, feel highly tenuous, feel very uncertain and strange, as you see a lot of human rights being upended and denied after 30, 40 or 50 years of very clear and plain practice of certain human rights, such as a woman's right to choose what to do with her own body yes, this can be very difficult. And yet, look at all of the aspects of life that are awakening in response to the we're going to say, attempted totalitarian effects. They aren't really winning. All they're doing, you've noticed is succeeding in awakening people all the more. All they're doing is succeeding in drawing people together to stand together very bravely, and to make a strong stance for whatever area of freedom, or freedom of expression of their choice, or movement, or ideas they have decided they will take a stand for. But the fascist or totalitarian oppression, as it's termed on your planet, which is simply a very dark, slow, very thick energy this is not ever going to win not now. It may have had its day at one time, and obviously there are some trying to bring that through again. But they cannot, because this is not the same planet it was 80 or 90 years ago. So you may feel to be facing in some ways, something very grave, almost insurmountable some days. And you're wondering how do we get through this? We would say, you don't resist. You stay in the moment, and you live out and breathe out your own beautiful higher self out into the atmosphere. And believe us, that is transforming everything into your desire to move the planet to a higher level. You won't be able to avoid the good effects of it, dear ones. You'll be caught up in the joy of it. No one will be able to stop you. We promise you that. So listen if you can. Listen to beautiful music such as this, which connects you to your own past, 
as well as your present and your future. Combine them. The only time that exists is now. And it is so, when people say there is only one of us here. It is true that all of you are one. An ongoing interconnection of consciousness, experience, and light forms. And when the predominant movement and expectation on the planet is that of light, that of enlightenment, and of forward progression into unity consciousness, into peace, into abundance for everyone, and into compassion, empathy, and kindness when that's the predominant vibration, you will see the birth of the fifth dimension on earth. And all of you are working toward that right now. Many who are working toward it have been sparked and encouraged to do so in response to these ridiculous new rules which are handed down, which are called totalitarian on your planet and they are such. And so, all of these sparks come together, dear ones, and you form your own sun, your own sight, and your own emanation of higher light and higher vibration, and that cannot be denied. You tip the scales in favor of ascension. This is what you're doing. Any time you decide to be joyful. Any time you decide to go to dance, to sing, to play outside in the garden, or lie in the grass and look at the clouds as you did as a child, or to just be with loved ones and be laughing, as well as the time that you meditate, or listen to inspiring music any time you do that, you're lifting the vibration of the entire planet. Certainly there are bigger planets, but this one has weighed heavily on many many minds and hearts throughout this universe of Nebadon, because of what she has been through. So we ask you to not ever doubt the efficacy and the depth or reach of your own vibration, friends. Because then, as that vibration goes out, it matches and connects with the vibration of so many others that are turning density back into light. And this is beyond glorious. Absolutely, when we stand back we look at how this planet's vibration has shifted even in the last three or four months. It's a glorious thing to see. And almost incalculable, the level of joy that is being felt and offered in the angelic realms, and amongst your ET friends and family, who are able with their instruments, or their special sight, to actually see the vibration rising. So as you listen to this or any other inspiring music, dear ones, image that light pouring out pouring into those areas of the world that need it, that beautiful sparkling, sentient, healing gold dust. Lighting up the hearts and the outlook of everyone, and disabling all guns and bombs, disabling all the tools of war machinery, and utterly defusing them. Then lifting consciousness to the level of realization that humanity we. We are in charge now of our own planet. We are no one's minions. And this old crowd it's time for you to face the light and to see who you are. To finally to look in the mirror, and see who you are. We'll just allow them that time, dear ones. Many are jumping into the light that even five years ago, would not have dreamt of doing so. So hold wide open the door. They are coming forward, yes. And so we send much love, dear ones, and many blessings. Full of thanks for the beauty of your beautiful, powerful presences upon the earth at this time. Namaste.